Hi, in this session I am going to talk about bioprospecting. Bioprospecting is also called the biodiversity prospecting. It is actually the exploration of natural resources for industry useful products and services. As we know, many of the natural products are used in industry, especially in pharmaceutical industry. If you look at the example of the antibiotics, these antibiotics are actually found from nature. The microorganisms harbored in the nature. And this is, has tremendous potential in treatment of many diseases. And it is same for the pigments, food products, etc. So, bioprospecting is the process which is uh, involved in the exploration of natural resources. The natural resources can be plants, animals, microorganisms, etc. That could be developed into commercially valuable products for industry. But the, another important uh, parameter in bioprospecting is commercially valuable. So we are actually exploiting the biodiversity for industrial applications. So that's what the bioprospecting is. It's basically the exploratory in nature. We are finding new products uh, for the well-being of human beings. Okay, the natural resources uh, like small molecules, small molecules has many applications, especially in pharmaceutical industry. It can be a macromolecule or a biochemical or just a genetic information. Sometimes the genetic information itself acts as a valuable resource for many industries. Uh, many industries are, uh, get benefited from the bioprospecting, which include agriculture, aquaculture, bioremediation, cosmetic, nanotechnology, and most importantly, pharmaceutical industry. Bioprospecting has many facets, which including chemical prospecting, that's the exploration of novel chemicals in nature, or gene prospecting, that's for looking for novel genes from nature, or bionic prospecting, novel designs and engineering techniques. So we'll talk about each of these things in detail. In chemical prospecting, we are identifying, isolating and characterizing industrially valuable chemicals from nature. This chemical can be originated from any type of microorganism and there are classical examples for this type of chemicals. The exploration for the antibiotics has begun uh, uh, centuries ago and we have found many antibiotics and we are also able to modify the existing antibiotics to get better activity. But the thing is that the chemical prospecting process involves uh, huge time and money investment. Because in order to find an antibiotic from a microorganism, we may need to screen for maybe lakhs or billions of uh, microorganisms for the antibacterial activity or antibiotic activity. So this process is very time consuming and uh, it takes a lot of uh, manual labor as well as it, uh, it needs a lot of money. So this chemical prospecting is very advantageous. But the thing is that it will take very long time and it doesn't guarantee any output even if we spend too much time and energy for that. So, but the thing is that uh, due to the advanced molecular biology techniques and high throughput screening methods, then automated bioassay programs, the speed of chemical prospecting has increased so much. One of the classical examples of chemical prospecting is the discovery of penicillin. Penicillin is a chemical produced by microorganism, this Penicillium uh, chrysogen. This has an antibiotic activity and it was a turning point in the history of uh, medicine. It is the, after the discovery of the penicillin, uh, it is, uh, so many other uh, chemicals has been discovered uh, for treating many other diseases. So it is a very vital part in uh, like uh, medicine. So this chemical actually found from the natural sources. The natural microorganism, the penicillin chrysogenum is producing this organism, this chemical. So finding such chemical is called the chemical prospecting. It need not be the application in the pharmaceutical industry. It can be a chemical which can be used in the paint industry or maybe a chemical which can be used in agriculture. So things like that uh, can happen. So chemical prospecting is the exploration for novel chemicals. There are so many microorganisms and plants which is unidentified. Some of the chemicals are used, uh, produced by the plants are used in, med in medicine like chloroquinone used in, for the treatment of malaria. These are the chemicals produced by a plant or maybe a chemical in a uh, animal can be also used in uh, treatment of diseases or for uh, some other purposes. So many of the natural pigments produced by the plants are used as a 
coloring agent in food industry as well as for paint and uh, such type of industries so these chemicals has tremendous value so chemical prospecting is the process of finding novel chemicals uh, for industrial application so, next we have gene prospecting uh, just like in chemical prospecting in gene prospecting we are looking for novel genes uh, like new genes because advanced functions uh, this thing has it, uh, the importance of gene prospecting is increasing very rapidly uh, two things uh, for that is like uh, one is molecular systematics the molecular systematic is help us to identification and characterization of genetic variants uh, then the recombinant dna technology by using recombinant dna technology we can transfer genes from any organisms to another so the flexibility is very high you can take the gene from a bacteria and put it in a uh, plant or something like that or you can put a genes from the humans and put that genes inside the escuche uh, coli we have we are doing it the humans are doing it uh, for many pharmaceuticals like insulin the gene which encode the insulin can be transferred from humans into the escuche coli for the industrial production of insulin uh, which is used for the treatment of diabetes so advancement of molecular systematics which helps in the characterization of the gene genetic variants and the genotypes and the flexibility provided by the rdna technology or recombinant dna technology for transferring genes in between the organism leads to the increased importance of gene prospecting getting a novel gene has many industrial applications okay one of the classical example for this is the bt cotton uh, for bt cotton the bt gene the bacillus thuringiensis uh, toxin producing gene was transfer was found in uh, the bacillus thuringiensis the bacteria this bacteria produced the bt toxin so the gene encoding the bt toxin was transferred from the bacteria to the cotton plant so what happened the cotton plant is able to produce uh, the bt toxin then this bt, BT toxin has uh, insect uh, resistance uh, if the insect or the larvae of the insect uh, eat this plant they will die so that leads to the enormous economic advantages for cotton farming <coughs> so the bt the gene the gene formed in the bt uh, bacillus thuringiensis bacteria was found characterized and it is transferred to a plant to get better economical benefit so that's an example of gene prospecting finally we have the bionic prospecting bionic prospecting is actually the application of natural biological systems to study and the design of engineering systems and modern technology so we are actually copying the natural things to uh, in our engineering or in our designing or in our art things like that can uh, is come under bionic prospecting so in this we are actually looking to the nature for getting ideas and designs so new designs pattern models and techniques based on natural biodiversity is found and it is applied in industry uh, it is it has applications in sensor technology architecture bioengineering biomodeling etc these are the few examples of the bionic prospecting you can see the shape of this particular car is inspired by the shape of the fish or the shape of the aircraft is inspired from the bird or uh, like uh, the uh, you might have heard about the artificial neural network it's a type of computing system uh, which is has many applications in even in the artificial intelligence the way the neural cells function is mimicked in a computer system so uh, the human computer or the thinking computer can be made by using this artificial neural network or maybe in the games you have seen the uh angry birds which is actually inspired from a real world uh, birds so that's how the bionic prospecting these are the major three major areas so prior prospecting chemical prospecting gene prospecting and bionics prospecting the bio prospecting as such has many applications it has applications in agriculture uh, like bio fertilizers bio fertilizers bio pesticides and veterinary antibiotics then it has applications in bioremediation uh, like the production of lactase and same for uh, beer factory waste treatment 
then it has applications in cosmetic and personal care the collagen is produced by the bacteria can be used for skin regeneration and the uh, microspond derived from uh, de derived keratinase can be used uh, for hair, hair removal so these are actually found from nature this organism uh, enzymes producing organisms are actually found from nature so they have the biodiversity has huge potential for that and it has many applications in pharmaceutical industry i have listed many application it is producing antibacterial drugs all the antibiotics then antifungal drugs anti listerial drugs anti malarial drugs and the anti helminthic drugs all of them them are actually found from nature so we have the anti cancer drugs like uh, belomycin and immunosuppressants anti inflammatory drugs and acetylcholine stress inhibitors so so many pharmaceutical industry in this uh, important products are actually uh, found from nature so in the bio prospecting uh, as i said it has a huge potential for industrial application and one of the uh, disadvantage or not disadvantage uh, one of the maybe side effect of bio prospecting is bio piracy you know what the piracy is in the pirated cds or pirated book or the plagiarism uh, copyright issues everything you are familiar with in bio piracy actually people are copying the biological things without authorization or with, without uh, paying the fair compensation the bio piracy term was coined by pat money uh, it is a Uh, in biopiracy a region's biological resources or indigenous knowledge are unethically appropriated or commercially exploited without providing fair compensation just think about it uh, sometimes uh, the indigenous peoples like or the uh, tribal peoples may have knowledge about some medicines so if some multinational company came and get this knowledge and once they get this knowledge they will exploit that uh, knowledge to get making money by using the tribal knowledge some industry or organizations are making huge amount of profit and they are not paying anything for the tribes for protecting that knowledge and having that knowledge so that type of things are called bio piracy okay they are getting the things from nature by the help of some people or something but they are not actually compensating the actual origin of the knowledge so that's what we called bio piracy or the by microorganisms or the plants uh, some uh, groups are discovering particular plant from one uh, forest and they are finding some industrial application for that plant uh, even without any traditional knowledge or something if they are finding that uh, plant has some applications and they have make in such a way that it can make a huge amount of profit for the company but they need to pay something for the forest or the nations which is protecting that forest otherwise there is no fair sharing of the income so those things are called a bio piracy so it is it can be about indigenous knowledge or a property of a forest or property of a biosphere reserve if you are somebody is unauthorized uh, taking it without authorization or not paying the compensation that come under uh, bio piracy one of the classical example of bio piracy is wr grease and company they have filed a patent for uh, use of neem plants uh, for controlling fungal infection in india we have using this neem plants for centuries for treating fungal infection uh, it is not new knowledge Uh, but once those companies are taking patent for this neem plant uses anti fungal agents they will be making huge amount of money and nobody else can make uh, use actually commercially use neem for anti fungal uh, neem uh, for treating fungal related diseases uh, in those cases it will get the monopoly for the company for our traditional knowledge so that's a case again of bio piracy Uh, and one other and the incident is like bio piracy of curcumin uh, curcumin is used in india for so many uh, for treating so many conditions and we already know the applications of the turmeric but uh, some companies actually filed a patent for curcumin in us once the patent is granted only those uh, who have the patent 
he is able to commercially use the product um, uh, commercially utilize the product for that application so but those patents are rejected for the neem and for the curcumin the patents are rejected because of the biopiracy the knowledge is already uh, well known so so biopiracy uh, contribute to the inequity between the developing countries uh, rich in biodiversity and developed countries host in biodiversity the always it happens because the most of the countries which it has a huge forest area will be uh, underdeveloped countries so the companies from the developed countries will come and invest and get the traditional knowledge treat uh, for for a industrial application or for a medicine and once they get the information they will make a huge amount of profit out of it uh, without paying fair compensation for the uh, indigenous peoples or the developed countries the developing countries okay the various international treaties are there to prevent the biopiracy but it still happens uh, this include us convention on biological diversity and the nioga protocol okay these all are uh, mean to prevent biopiracy thank you so much